Brands are valuable assets. Some brands are worth hundreds of millions of dollars. According to the Forbes 2020 list of most valuable brands in the world, Apple stood at number one with its brand value of about $241 billion. Google was number two with just over $200 billion, while Microsoft and Amazon followed with Facebook at number five with $70 billion. Now, given that the brands are worth so much, it makes sense that companies would try to protect their brands from any adverse environmental factors that might negatively affect the brand. A lot of news articles recently and online discussion forums are stating that Facebook is being rebranded into Meta. Facebook, the company, not the app, into Meta. Now the term rebranding is the focus of this video. We will discuss the concept keeping the name chains of Facebook, the parent company of the Facebook app, in mind. The video will also try to explain the difference between rebranding and repositioning. While both of these concepts generally go hand in hand, there is an important distinction that we need to understand because brand not only comprises of the brand identity but also brand image or the brand position in the consumer's mind. Let's look at Facebook a couple of years ago in 2019. That year, the company also went through a rebranding process. Social media network Facebook has introduced a new company logo to make a visual distinction between the parent company and its application, which means Facebook app will keep its logo unchanged. The company announced on Monday that this brand changes to help users know that Facebook is the parent company of the services they use. The new logo changes color constantly, with each color representing one of the company's products, including the Facebook app, Messenger, Instagram, WhatsApp, Oculus, Workplace, Portal, and Calibra. Over the coming weeks, Facebook will start placing the new brand logo within their products and marketing materials, including on its new company website. When Facebook did this in 2019, there was not a lot of hue and cry over their rebranding effort. It generally went unnoticed by the regular consumers, as many rebranding efforts do. To understand what rebranding is, let's first understand what a brand is. Of course, rebranding cannot be done without a brand that already exists. According to the American Marketing Association, a brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or any other feature that identifies one seller's goods or services as distinct from those of other sellers. Now, keeping this definition in mind, rebranding can be simply thought of as an attempt by the company to change something associated with an established brand, such as their name, logo, design, symbol, font, the target audience, etc. But it is also known that brand is not just the name, logo, design that identifies the brand. It is also the distinctive image and associations in the mind of the consumers. So when somebody, when a consumer thinks of the brand Apple, he or she not only thinks about the name, the logo, but also thinks about it being a tech company, it being perhaps an expensive company, or it being an American company, or it being a greedy company. Now, these associations that the brand occupies in the consumer's mind can be termed as the brand's position in the consumer's mind. So let's take a look at another example. What comes to mind when a consumer thinks of the companies Ford, Toyota, Honda, Rolls-Royce, or Lamborghini? Of course, the various elements of the brand, such as their name, logo, design, etc., come to the mind, but the consumer might also immediately think of automobiles. Now, these companies occupy the position of car brands in the consumer's mind, even though Honda sells a lot of different products and Rolls-Royce is also famous for the aircraft engines that it builds. The perception that the consumers have about the different brands reflect their positions in the consumer's mind. So, when I think of Toyota, I think about reliability and dependability. When I think of Ford, I think about American car. When I think of Rolls-Royce, I think of luxury. 
And when I think of Lamborghini, I think of speed. So the brand is not only the name, the logo and the symbols associated with the brand's identity, but also the perception, which is called brand position that the consumers have about that brand. To understand positioning and repositioning in greater detail, please watch my other videos. So when thinking about rebranding, it can be thought of as existing in a continuum. Rebranding can be a very simple change in the brand, such as changing the logo design or changing the tagline or simply changing the color of the brand. Or it could also be a major change that rips apart the old brand altogether to establish a new brand or tries to get rid of all the old brand's perceptions and images of that brand occupying the consumer's mind. Let's look at rebranding by looking at the two ends of this continuum. Lauren Michel and Mary Lampkin in their 2004 paper identified the two ends of these spectrums and coined the term evolutionary or revolutionary rebranding. Evolutionary rebranding can be thought of as minor changes in the brand. For example, a change in the logo, a change in the design of the logo, the aesthetics of the brand, etc. that do not change what the company does, who the company targets or does not intend to change the positioning of the company in the consumer's mind to a greater extent. You can think of this as a brand refresh as well, which is also another widely used term. A brand refresh or a minor rebranding is a simple change designed to reinvigorate the company, create new interest or perhaps go after a new market. As the external environment and consumers change, the company can feel a little stale and boring and they might decide to do a brand refresh so, that, so as to be, bring some enthusiasm about the brand. Many brands simply change their logo to appear more modern. We can see that a lot of companies go through brand refresh time and time again. We can see that Coca-Cola throughout the years has changed their logos. Pepsi has changed their logo sometimes subtly, sometimes with a big bang. Microsoft has been rebranded multiple times over the last many, many years. If you are a soccer fan, you will know that Juventus changed its logo as did Wolverhampton Wanderers. Thinking about Facebook itself, let's take a look at their product Instagram as an example. Instagram in 2016 changed its logo from a Polaroid camera to this symbol. Now this is a very simple case of rebranding which represents the fact that Instagram was much more than just a photo sharing app that it started out as. So while the old logo represented Instagram earlier, it no longer represented Instagram in 2016 and they decided to change the logo. Kia also recently changed its logo from this to this while also changing its tagline. Kia created the new design to embody forward movement of the brand to the future, appear bolder, more confident, and also appear modern. Now, there are many, many examples of rebranding like this as it happens all the time. Now, companies may or may not be trying to reposition the brand while doing rebranding with minor aesthetic changes. Repositioning, which is a more extreme form of rebranding, requires the company to do things that changes the consumer's perceptions about the brand. So simply changing the aesthetic of the brand may not have any impact on the consumer's perception about the brand. So if the new logo of Kia inspires the consumers to look at Kia in a different way or perceive Kia in a different way, for example, the consumers start to think about Kia as a modern and innovative company, then the logo redesign was able to reposition the brand. But oftentimes minor changes like this may be done to just refresh the brand and not to reposition it. Because to actually change the position, Kia would not only have to redesign its logo, but also have to redesign its car to look more modern and futuristic. They may have to change the advertisements and promotional campaign to reflect the new position that it wants to create in the consumer's mind. After all, changing the consumer's perception about a well-established brand is not easy. Just ask Buick which has been trying to convince us that's not a Buick. That's what I told him in an effort to reposition the brand from the grandparents car to a hip and modern car. The Buick example can be thought of as an effort to rebrand the 
Buick brand by repositioning the brand while not changing the brand name at all. Many times rebranding is not about just changing the logo or simply refreshing the brand. It involves a larger change including an attempt to reposition the brand. For example, if you are old, you might remember Apple as Apple Computers. And if you're not as old, you might remember Dunkin as Dunkin Donuts. As they changed their market and expanded into new markets, the old names sometimes do not fit well with what the brand is all about. Apple dropped the computers to become Apple Inc. in 2007. This is because that year Apple introduced its iPhone to the consumers and the rebranding was meant to communicate that Apple is not just a computer company but a tech company. This name change was also intended to reposition the brand in the consumer's mind so that they no longer think of Apple as only being a computer company. In 2018, Dunkin Donuts, for the same purpose, changed its name to Dunkin. They did this to reflect changes in its menu and emphasize its sale of coffee and sandwiches. And I'll tell you as a foreign student in the United States, when I first went inside Dunkin Donuts around 2010, I was surprised that they also had a breakfast menu with sandwiches. The croissants with bacon and eggs tasted delicious. Now this attempt at rebranding also incorporates an attempt at repositioning the brand, which is an extreme form of rebranding. Some radical or revolutionary changes in branding of the company also falls under the umbrella of rebranding. Now these are major changes that a company might go through as they undergo corporate restructuring or when the company wants to fundamentally redefine as well as reposition it in the consumer's mind. In order to redefine the company, its products and its customers, the company may try to rebrand by changing its name itself. We can think about Google and its name change in 2015, where the parent company changed its name to Alphabet. Another famous example of rebranding is Philip Morris, the famous tobacco company. They changed their name from Philip Morris to Altria. The change of Facebook to Meta is also a change in the name of the company and is designed to emphasize their future strategic focus on the metaverse. Now keep in mind that when changing the name of the brand, you are effectively destroying the old brand and all the value or equity that that brand had. Now since this is a completely new brand, the company can use the marketing tools at their disposal to create a new and more desired position in the consumer's mind, but they will have to do it from scratch.